dual channel versus single channel. Everybody thinks they know the answer, but the results may shock you. So while we were at the Lenovo Legion Council, I was talking to Tudor and I was also talking to Eber a lot about single channel versus dual channel because I got the T730 here from Lenovo on the desk that we've been using. Uh, and they knew I was gonna upgrade to 32 gigabytes. So inside there's one stick of memory and it's a 16 gigabyte stick of DDR4 memory running at 2666 cast latency 19. And I was like, one stick of memory. This is a gaming PC. Um, and of course, you know, in talking to people, they're always like, well, dual channel, you gotta have dual channel or else your computer is gonna, uh, you just explode and nothing's gonna work. So I decided to put that to the test. We got some of this Patriot Viper gaming memory. This is some pretty extreme stuff. It goes up to 3,600 megahertz, you know. And I've got 32 gigabytes of this. I'm gonna put this in my main rig to have 32 gigabytes of uh, dedicated WAM. Dedicated WAM. I'll be very happy, but for now, what we're gonna do is I'm going to run this at 2666, cast latency 19, just like the memory in there. I'm gonna test 16 versus single channel 16. Then I'm gonna also, just for the hell of it, pull out one of these and run single channel eight. So we're gonna see if eight gigabytes, you know, single channel, see how that runs versus 16 single channel versus 16 dual channel. Let's get right into the benchmarks. I wanna mention that in the background, we didn't really have any applications running other than the um, whatever launchers that were required for the game. Uh, and then we also had Firefox running with about three tabs. If you guys are running uh, some pretty RAM heavy stuff and keeping it open in the background like Photoshop and Chrome with a million tabs, um, it's probably gonna be a bit different. But just gaming, if you keep everything closed and all you're doing is gaming, your results should be similar and people are going to be angry. I can already tell, but we did the tests multiple times and checked our RAM speeds and here's what we got. All right, so Shadow of War, dual channel 16 with this Patriot memory right here. 1080p, 70 with a minimum of 29. Now moving over to 16 gigabytes of single channel, same, 70, yeah, 70 with a minimum of 28, so almost the same. Okay, you step down to eight gigabytes of memory, and it's a tiny bit slower, 67 for the average, and uh, 21 for the low. So really not much difference between the single channel and the dual channel on the 16. Interesting. Up to 1440p. And as you can see here again, it's nearly identical. 49 with a low of 17. Single channel 16 is 49 with a low of 12. Very similar. And eight gigabytes of single channel memory, 47 with a low of 11 pretty good there and there's really not much difference with that game uh, with 16 single or dual let's go over and check out doom running in vulcan using ocat to uh, test this game out all right so dual channel 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory 151 at 1080p now we've got uh, the 16 gigabyte single channel 150 so one fps difference between dual channel and single channel if you move down to eight gigabytes of memory you're dropping down to 143. So it does give you a little boost to have the extra RAM in there. However, at uh, 1440p, it's very similar all across the board. We've got 100 for dual channel 16. We got 101 for uh, single channel 16, and we have 99 for eight gigabyte single channel. All right, we moved on to a few canned benchmarks because you know those are pretty much guaranteed to be the same. We ran these multiple times to make sure we weren't crazy. And uh, let's go to the results. Dual channel, 16 gigabytes of precision, 1080p. All right, 46.37 with a low of 35.65. Now, you move over to single channel 16, 45.16, a low of 35.11. So that's like not even one FPS difference. Like, yeah, a few tenths of a frame percent. There. It's like nothing. When you step down to... Um, Eight gigabytes of single channel, you just lose a couple frames, 44.51 with a low of 35.42. So really similar at 1080p. 1440p, it's pretty much 28 across the board. 28, I mean, it was weird because even the, the single channel was a tiny bit faster. We got like 28.14 versus 28.86, but 1440p is like virtually identical. All right, let's take a look at Valley. Another canned benchmark that I like quite a bit. So 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory running 1080p. 
Everything's maxed out with all these games, guys. Um, and all the same. So with Valley 1080p, dual channel 16, 62.2 for 1080p. The low of 24.43, 16 gigabyte single channel. 62.2 again with a low of 27.6, eight gigs of single channel memory. That's 62.8 with a low of 27.2. So Valley is pretty much the same. Doesn't care about single or dual channel. Doesn't care about 16 or eight. Just doesn't care. 1440p, same story. 38 FPS with a low of 18.7 for the 16 dual channel. Single channel is 37.2 and 19.9 for the low. So very similar with eight gigabytes of single channel memory, 38.5 and 20.5 for the low. Again, pretty much the same. All right, the last game we tested was Apex Legends. And uh, similar story you guys are gonna see here, but I'm gonna read it out anyway. 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory, 1080p, 75.5 or the low of 64. Moving over to uh, 16 gigabytes of single channel memory, 74.9, the low of 62. And then uh, one eight gigabyte stick, 74, low of 63. All right, 1440p, 16 gigabytes dual channel, 52.667, a low of 45. 16 gigabytes single channel, 53.04, a low of 43. And eight gigabytes single channel, 53.13, and uh, a low of 44. And I bet if we ran the 1440p a few times, the 16 dual would be about the same. It's about the same all the way across, but all, all right around the 53 mark. 52.667 versus 53.04 versus 53.13. Hmm. So I was not expecting these results. I was expecting dual channel to be substantially faster in all the tests, but it wasn't on this Lenovo system. Um, now this is an Intel based rig with an 8700K on the inside and a GTX 1060 from Nvidia. Uh, I kind of want to run these tests again on an AMD system to see if there's some uh, you know differences there. One thing I will note is that uh, with the modern gaming systems, the speed of your RAM does make a difference. So if you get, you know, 2666 versus like 1066, well, of course, this is going to be faster. Uh, that wasn't, you know, the case as much in the past, but now faster RAM can give you a boost. That's why it's nice to have some of this 3600 megahertz uh, memory right here. It's also got some tight timings as well. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there who go online and they, and they talk to people and they download programs uh, so that they can you know, monitor the speed and everything. And what they'll end up doing is they'll, they'll test 3,600 megahertz with a cast latency of 19. And then they'll bring it down to like, you know, 2,666 with a cast latency of 14. And they'll see if that's faster. So cast latency is important, uh, as is the frequency of the memory. But this was all tested with cast latency 19 and uh, 2,666. So not what I expected, but for straight up gaming, it's not that big of a deal to run in single channel. And I know people are going to try to crucify me, but hey, it's been uh, it's been like a few months since someone tried to crucify me. I'm kind of missing it, to tell you the truth. Uh, I don't think this is as radical as our video where we said the bulldozer is not that bad for the money when people freaked out and lost their mind. I don't think this is that controversial. Um, but I will say that if dual channel memory is about the same price, go for it. If it's $10 more, still go for the dual channel. Um, it's You're going to see a bigger difference when it comes to productivity and that sort of thing. If you do anything other than gaming, make sure you go for dual channel. And just as a rule, go for dual channel memory. However, if you can get a single stick of you know memory, like a 16 gigabyte DDR4 DIMM, and it's 50 bucks, and dual channel 8 gigabyte is the same price, get the single channel 16. Why not? Um, if it's 50 bucks cheaper, maybe, and you're just going to game, get the 16. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. It's still hurting my head. Thanks to Lenovo and uh, Intel for providing this so we could test out a gaming machine, see what it's like. And also, guys, be sure to check out the store. This is our Don't Buy Apple Products shirt. You guys can get that and many other shirts. I think we're, we've got a few of these left. They sold out a couple of times already, but so head over to epicpants.com, grab one of those, grab yourself a mouse and a mouse pad, maybe a mug, and uh, be happy. Again, let us know what you guys think in the comments. If you guys want to run some tests on your own and post them on the forum with different 
hardware that's not an 8700K. I'd be curious to see that. And uh, let us know if you want to see this test done again with an AMD system. And, uh, you know, if we have some time, I would like to do that. So see you guys in the comments.